I really do feel like I started specializing immediately when I was uh, when I was eight year old or so. But I didn't think about it that way. I was just doing what was exactly. what was fun, and I was very different from from the other kids. The other kids like went to the chess club once a week for training, played a tournament at the weekends. I was not like that. I sat at home. Uh, I studied with my books. I just sat at the board trying to find new ideas. Sometimes I would play chess online. I think I was allowed to use the internet two hours a week, so I would usually <laughs> use those hours to play play online. I mean, I would do chess all the time, not because somebody told me to, but because um, because I loved it. So this specializing was very, very um, natural to, um, uh, to me, and it didn't feel like I was ever forced to, to do anything. And, and that, that was the same for me when I started doing this. I didn't feel like I did it because I had to. There was nobody pushing me. And, and that is the same drive that I use today. You know, I go to training every day because this is what I love yeah. doing and I always want to become better. And it's important to, to build that drive. It all starts with just having fun with, with whatever it is and that you have an offer to go to, you know, I did football when I was younger and I, and I did and I did athletics and you know, it was for me, it was all about just going there, meeting, meeting up with friends and, and I think for me, it's, 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 it's a nice way of, of doing it because I trained with people that were not as quick as me and not as good as me, but, but we had fun together and that what made me always come back that, that, you know, I had my friends there. So, um, but, but over time, these things change, right? Because you need, to, you need to go over to a different approach when you really want to reach the highest level, I think. A lot of countries make, make a, a mistake in that sense that kids are specialized very, very early. And time and time again, it shows that having like a versatile background can be very, very um, helpful. And besides, I mean, your body develops, so you might not even know until you're in your late yeah. teens what you're going to be the best at, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Check it out. You know, I think to be the best, you need to at least hate losing. I don't think, I, I think it's different for people. Somebody, they just enjoy winning and somebody, they just hate losing. I think I hate more to lose than I love to win, if you know what I'm saying. You know, it's like, I get super pissed when, when, I, when I'm not able to perform at my highest level. And when I win, that is somehow what I expect of myself. Of course, I get happy and everything and when I win big championships, we've seen that. But, but I think if you're not competitive, you're not able to make it on the highest level. I think at some point you start competing against yourself more than, uh, more, more than others. So like, uh, if I win a tournament or I win a game, well, if I win a tournament, I'm usually happy. But if I win a game and I don't perform well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be happy. You know, you play games that last for four, five, six hours. You know, I, I run for like 46 seconds. I think I'm always, focused, um, given that I always have like a goal that I want to reach. But when it comes to like the ultra, the hyper focus, that is just a few minutes before the race and during the race. Yeah, I think uh, you have a very good point there that the focus, like the eyes uh, on the prize and the hyper focus, they are very, very different. I think part of the focus on on, on the longer term is that you have to be able to completely relax and detach yourself from, from, what you, uh, from what you do. When I go there, then I'm completely focused. And when, when, I, when I play, um, so I think nobody can be 100% focused for five, six hours. I, I think that's, that's impossible. It's more about like knowing what moments you need. You need exactly, that hyper focus, exactly. you need uh, to, to, to zero in, to sense those moments that's very, very, uh, very important and to have the physical and the mental energy to be at your very best in those moments. I think that's part of what sets apart um, me from, from others. Check it out. I like the expression with the, with the Puma family. I think it's, um, I think it's very spot on. 
Um, I like the way that the Puma does things. They give their athletes opportunities and they are very focused on providing their athletes with the best equipment that they need. Mm -hmm. And every time, you know, I go to Puma with something, no task is too big and no task is too small. And, and I really like that. So I think that I, and I know that I found uh, uh, my partner for life. So I, I really, I really enjoy being there and uh, I'm very happy that Magnus can be there as well. So now I can, you know, Learn some, learn some chess. Maybe we can train together. I've had uh, a good relationship now with Puma for uh, for a few years. Um, you know, uh, I can't wait to be showing up to uh, tournaments in some <laughs> some fresh uh, fresh apparel. The Tokyo moment that was that was really special. You know, and I, I never I never saw it happen uh, that way. You know, I was always I was always focused on on winning, but but when it turned out to be you know 45 it was it was a number that that even even I couldn't wrap my head around. I think the moment I usually come back to is uh, uh, from the year 2000 when I won the Norwegian Championship under 11, <laughs> uh, uh, because that was the first time like that I was ever the best at my age. So at that time, that was the first time where I felt like, wow, I can actually, uh, I can actually be really good at this.